So I appreciate everybody's comments on the last video on the request video, okay? It seems like what a lot of people want me to do is to do a quick review on a lot of the guns that are out there in the sub $300 range. Now there's a lot of them, so the only way I'm gonna be able to do this is to go, I'm gonna go, let's just go right to the biggest online retailer right now in paintball, which is ANS gear. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go through the guns uh, one by one, starting in alphabetical order from the very top, and I'll give you some quick thoughts and stuff like that on you know sub $300 paintball guns. Now, the idea here, if you're gonna be buying your own gear, you want something a little bit better than the gear that you can rent, okay? And in, mo in a lot of places, they're renting, uh, you know, Model 98s, Tipman Model 98s. Some places are uh, renting uh, A5s. Uh, some places are um, renting things like, you know, spiders or piranhas and stuff like that. So ideally, if you're going to want to be buying a gun, you want to want to get something a little bit better than the rental gear. Now, obviously, you'll be able to take care of it and keep it clean and stuff. But I got to say this from the very beginning with paintball is that, there's a minimum amount of investment that it costs to play paintball. Now, I don't even want to start talking about tournament paintball, okay? Budget baller, tournament paintball, uh-uh, okay? <laughs> Your entry fee to a national tournament such as the PSP or the MPPL can cost you more than a basic decent setup for paintball. So. I don't want people sending emails or even talking. If, if you're if you're a budget baller and you're trying to play paintball on a budget, tournaments are the last thing you need to be thinking about. Okay, you can't afford them. It's too expensive, and entry fee plus paint plus ID card is going to cost more than probably your entire setup. Not even counting traveling. Not even counting the endless amount of practice. Not even counting the local tournaments you're going to be playing to prepare. Okay, so. If you're just trying to get on the field to play, the last thing you need to be thinking about right now is trying to compete in a tournament. Let's just think, let's, okay, let's say you want to play the PSP, right? How much does it cost to play, play a PSP? Entry fee alone costs between probably three to $400, depending on what division you want to play. Maybe let's say 250 to 400 bucks, okay? Then on top of that, you still have to pay your $60 ID card. Then you still need to go buy paint, four to five cases minimum, let's say five cases at about 40 to 50 bucks each, so you're gonna run between two to 250 dollars. You can see right there, you're 600 dollars. Now that's just if the PSP is being played in your backyard. If you've got to travel somewhere to play, that's even more. Local tournaments, even though they're a little bit cheaper on the entry, you still have to pay for an ID card, you still have to buy the paint, you still have to practice to compete in the tournament. Sometimes you have to travel to the practices. So, hi Mike, I'm, you know, I'm 13 years old, I'm on a budget and I wanna to play tournaments. No, sorry, you can't do it, okay? You just can't do it. And I'm sorry I gotta be the one to bring that up to me, but you know, you, you gotta understand, tournament paintball is an animal in itself, okay? It costs way too much money for most people to play, which is why about 90% of paintball doesn't play tournaments. So if you're a budget baller and you're on a budget, the thing you need to be thinking about is just playing rec play, okay? Until you get a little older, you get a job, you get established, then you can worry about playing tournaments later on down the road. Let's talk about just playing rec play from the very beginning. This is, it's, it's like, it's like, let's say for instance, my dream was always wanted to go be a cigarette boat racer, okay? You know, that's like me walking up there and like, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of interested in uh, racing cigarette boats. So, um, you know, you know, I, I want to get in on a budget. I mean, what does it cost really to race a cigarette boat? I mean, you probably need, what, a dozen mechanics making about 100 grand a year, a cigarette boat that's probably, what, a million and a half? And, well, what's a, what's a, what's a race helicopter cost? I don't know, maybe a million bucks, something like that, plus a pilot that's going to charge probably 150 grand a year, maybe more to do that, and then you need a camera guy, plus the insurance, the gas, all that other stuff stuff you know as you can see if I walked up to a dock and said yeah I'm kind of interested in being a, a cigarette boat racer I want to own a cigarette boat racing team you know what, what was something like that cost you know I'm on on budget you know so they're gonna look at you fucking laugh you know so it's the same thing when you come to me and tell me well I want to play tournaments but I don't have money for a basic setup Sorry, can't do it, okay? Get a little older, you make some money, we talk about tournaments. Right now, budget baller, we need to be focusing on recreational play. That's all you can afford, okay? I'm, I'm fortunate I don't have enough money to own a cigarette boat racing team, and if you're a budget baller, you don't have enough money to be playing tournaments. So once you start talking about tournaments, you're talking about paying more for eight to 10 games than you will pay for your entire setup. So, <laughs> though, with that being said, Let's go, to, go down the list here, markers. We're gonna look, let's start right now, Angel. Uh, um, let's go to Azoden. Okay, Azoden ATS. Uh, these are sub $100 guns. Um, these are basic stack two blowbacks. Um, I like the camel, or the Azoden ATS camel a little better. There's certain things that I look for. One of the things is definitely a clamping feed deck, okay? 
Um, as you can see here, the basic ATS, the black ones for, I don't know if maybe they have the clamping feed necks in the box, but um, Zoden ATS, it's a basic unregulated stack tube blowback. Now, there's gonna be two types of guns that you're gonna look at as you're, as you're going through budget guns, okay? You're gonna be looking at guns with regulators and eyes and guns without regulators and eyes. I can tell you from experience, 99% of the time, the guns with regulators and eyes are gonna shoot better than the guns that are unregulated, okay? The, um, the, the basic, uh, basic spiders and stuff like that, Azodans, those are all unregulated guns without eyes. When your guns are unregulated, what does that mean? Cons shot to shot consistency is gonna be terrible, okay? You're gonna be plus or minus 30 over the chronograph. Um, no eyes means the guns can chop paint and break paint, okay? Which means it's, you know, you're, you're gonna be cleaning your gun while you're out there on the field, and you're gonna be breaking paint, which costs a lot of money. So, um, Zoden Blitz, I've always liked the Zoden Markers. Um, auto Cocker Barrels, Ion Feed Necks, they shoot pretty good. I had a little bit of problem with them with the, uh, um, sometimes they, if, you, if their pressures aren't set right, they have a hard time getting up to 300 feet per second, especially if the paint's really small. But Zoden Markers aren't too bad. Zoden Blitzes, um, 2011 Blitz, they're selling them for about 169 bucks. One thing I don't like about a Zodens is there's very little you can do with the board unless you have the uh, the board programmer. And even that, the Zoden boards are very basic boards from six, seven years ago. And you know, I, th I think if you're if you're going to spend 169 bucks on a Blitz, I would probably just spend the extra 20, 30 bucks and just go get the Proto Rail. Much better board, much better gun. I think if you're already if you're already in the mid 100 dollar range, I think you need to save up a couple extra bucks and go get the rail. In my opinion, I'll, I'll give away the uh, I'll give it away already. But in my opinion, I think the rail for 200 bucks is the best budget baller gun that's out there. There's the Azoden Chaos, which is the um, which is basically the Unregulated mechanical versions, not a bad gun for $89.90. Um, but, you know, the, the in my opinion, I think if, if you're going to be buying your own gear, I think that $200 for um, this gun, which, you know, which is the Proto Rail, let, let me check how much it is. Two, let's see, yeah, 2011 Proto Rail PMR, $249. That right there, in my opinion, is probably one of the best deals right now on the market. There's the, the BT-4, the Combat Irk, the BT Delta, and stuff like that. Most of the BT guns are very close renditions of the Tipman Model 98. Okay, they pretty much have almost the same exact, um, in, uh, the same exact parts on the inside. The shells are slightly different, but the insides are pretty much based on a Tipman. So, um, you, you've got to be really careful as a budget baller. A lot of budget ballers tend to get sucked into the Milsim area. And if that's the area you want to go into, great. But... Most people, after they've been playing paintball for a little while, you'll notice that their guns look less and less milsim, okay? I know there's a milsim element that tends to suck people into paintball, but I'm, I'm going to tell you, as a budget baller, I wouldn't go down this route, okay? I would not go down this route. You get a lot of looks, very little performance, and once you're in the sport for a while, you're going to end up getting rid of these milsim type markers, and you're not going to be able to get a lot of your money back. Um, you know, it's, it's just, you know, these type of... Milsim markers, you know, it really also depends. Now, if you play a lot of woods ball, 100% woods ball, you can get away with this with with a strictly Milsim type marker. But if you're playing hyperball or speed ball or playing air ball, okay, these guns are not going to cut it. Okay, they're not going to cut it. They're too big. Um, they're too cumbersome, especially guns with stocks on the back of them. I mean, you know, here's a problem with the stocks on the back of them. This is why you'll never see me using guns with stocks on the back of them. Is the okay if you put the tank in there then you've got this weird contraption between a big tank and a stock on the back of the gun and you don't know which one to shoulder if you run a remote line it's very hard to switch hands okay you're gonna have half your shots out the right half your shots out the left if all you have is a remote line coming out the right hand side how do you shoot out the left okay what, are you gonna tip your gun over to the side or no 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 you um stocks in my opinion are, are they look cute and they're and, they're, and then, yeah they definitely serve a, a milsim type element to it, but in terms of a performance gun, I, I would save your money. So, um, you know, it is really funny seeing people with a stock and a tank on the back and the tank is longer than the stock, but the stock is still extended. I mean, come on. Um, you know, the BT guns, the basic BT guns, I mean, all the way going up to the TM-15, which we're not going to talk about. That's, you know, that's almost a $500 gun. Most of them are just going to be Tipman, you know, Tipman kind of knockoffs um, with Tipman internals. So you can all classify those almost into the same type of gun. Um, let's talk about the Dangerous Power E1, which is a common gun that a lot of people ask about. The E1, it's basically a semi-auto shooter. You've got two modes on it. I'm, I'm not a big fan of the E1 uh, for this for the, for a couple reasons. One, you only have semi-auto and 25 balls per second 
full auto. You know, I mean, last I checked, that was the only two modes on the board. You know, so basically it's a straight semi-auto shooter. Another thing, it's got a stovepipe feed neck, okay? That drives me crazy. That, that right there is enough for me just to pass on the gun and keep going because not a lot of loaders fit that stovepipe feed neck, okay? And if you're gonna invest $150 into a loader, you wanna make sure it's clamped on there properly. And it's not very, I, I just don't like the idea of having to take a vice grip to the, uh, the E1's clamping feed neck, buying another one for 30 bucks, putting it on there so that I can put my loader on top of that gun. So. I don't know, I, I, that, that, that kind of stuff just kind of pisses me off. So I mean, I understand, yeah, it's a sub $100 gun, but Dangerous Power, last I checked, had the patent on the clamping feed neck, you know, put it on your E1, you know, and, and if you're going to put a, a, a mode inside of your gun, why are you going to put 25 ball per second full auto in it? I mean, put put a ramping at like 12, you know, but, so I mean, other, the E1's a good shooting gun, don't get me wrong for semi-auto, but definitely that clamping feed neck thing, you need to take the price of the gun, which is 190 bucks, and add another 30 to it for the clamping feed neck, so. The gun actually should cost 220 bucks. Um, die, you know, in, in my opinion, in the, uh, you know, in, in oh, I'm sorry, I'm Proto, but in my opinion, the Proto is probably one of my favorite budget baller guns. Okay, so let's, so let's get down. into Empire. Um, we already talked about the Deltas. Um, you know, you got like the BT4, the, uh, what else you got, the, the, just the basic BT. You got the Omega. This, this one's again kind of sucking you into the Milsim type stuff. Um, be really careful when you're paying for a gun that's got a, a collapsible stock on it. As I promise you, once you screw your tank into it, you're going to take it right off the back. Um, let's talk about the ER3. This actually is a, a nice looking, inexpensive gun right here. Okay, The ER3 is selling right here for just under $75. Bucks. Um, got a nice clamping feed neck on there, which is really good. It's the same clamping feed neck it looks like that you see on the you know, on the mini and, and it's, you know, nice little barrel, rubber foregrip, you know, internal cocking. That doesn't look like too bad of a gun there for 75 bucks. So, you know, ER3 definitely I think I shines as a budget baller mechanical gun if you're just looking to get something that, to throw paint with. But then again, if you're going to be out there with regulars that are out there playing paintball, a, a semi-auto mech shooter is going to be—it's going to be a very difficult day for you because people out there are going to be using electronic guns. They're going to have the, the the volume on you. They're going to have the rate of fire on you. So you know, it's one of those things. Do you want to spend 75 bucks and then turn around and sell it for 30 later on down the road, or do you want to go ahead and save up into the upper 200s or the uh, the upper 100s and buy something that you know has a, a regulator, has eyes, and a, and a circuit board that's going to be able to shoot the paint back. So um, ER3, you know, it's, it's not a bad gun, but it, it's not much better than a rental either. So now let's take a look here. Extreme Rage, Empire, same thing. Um, ER3, okay. Now let's get into uh, GOG. Now the Envy, the Envy Blackheart, I think is a really nice gun. I really like the Envy Blackheart. And um, now they're coming out with some different colors and stuff like that, but the Envy Blackheart is a great shooter for $250. One of the things I really like, it's got a select fire uh, mode on the board, which I think is really trick for scenario play. Um, but, you know, the, the Envy is basically just the, I guess you would say the speedball version of the G1, which in my opinion is one of the best woods ball guns that are out there. Um, it's got the same regulator. The internals of that regulator is the same thing that you find on the Lux. Um, you know, the, the barrel's not bad, but I, I really like the, uh, the Envy gun. Now, if you're gonna get the Envy, just pay the f extra 50 bucks and get it with the black heart board. <laughs> I mean, if you're at 200, mow a couple more lawns, get it with the black heart board. It's, it's, you know, to have full adjustment over your rate of fire, your modes, and, and stuff like that, I think is worth the extra 50 bucks. And, and it really just makes that gun. You get laser eyes, it's, yeah. Go, spend the extra 50 bucks and get the black heart board. Um, the Ecstasy's, looks like they went up in price a little bit. Um, the Ecstasy's, you know, I, I like the Ecstasy. It's basically a Envy on steroids. It's got a nice curved trigger. It's got the on-off ASA. It's got a nice clamping feed neck, a metal clamping feed neck. It's got a little bit of a longer barrel. Um, I can't remember if it's a 12. I believe it's a 12-inch barrel. Maybe 12 or 14-inch. The barrel's pretty long on it. Uh, but the barrel on it is very nice. It's like one of those linear barrels. And the, uh, the Ecstasy is really nice. One thing I also like about the Ecstasy is that the button for the on-off is a lot bigger than on the... Uh, on the uh, the Envy, but Ecstasy for 200, you know, the, I would get the basic black one, 250 bucks. Yeah, they got some cool colors for a couple bucks extra, but I mean, that, now now we're talking about glitter and glam, and as a budget baller, that's not in your budget. So, 
Um, and, and obviously, here's my favorite all-time Woods Ball gun um, out of everything that I've ever seen made intact. Uh, what are some of the other Woods Ball guns that are out there? Any of the Tipman guns? Any of the um, uh, even the uh, you know like the 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 Empire and the BTs and stuff like that? I mean the the TM7, the TM15, uh, you name it, whatever whatever. Woods ball gun that you can think of off the top of your head, in my opinion, the GOG G1 with the black heart board smokes all of them. It's just, it's, it's just, it is just such a monster of a rifle. It is just such a great gun. I mean, if you're looking at a lot of people, what's, what's the best um, uh, Woods ball gun to get right there? GOG G1 with the black heart board for 300 bucks. Save up a little bit later on down the road, get the apex barrel for it. And um, you know, if you really want to upgrade it, also later on down the road, look at the uh, the Tech TL7 bolt. But oh god, I mean, the G1 with the black heart board, in my opinion, is is the best woods ball gun ever made. There's just nothing even close to it. I've shot pallets of paint through mine. No problems. It never breaks paint. It's just quiet, whisper quiet, and looks amazing as far as looks. I mean, I, I take the stock off it, but um, yeah, it's <laughs> GOG G1 with black art. That hasn't changed in the past two or three years. That's an amazing gun. Okay, uh, let's talk about, I don't know if there's anything in here under invert now. Minis just jumped over the price, 325. Minis are great guns, um, just the ergonomics of them for a lot of people, they're a little too small. That's about it. But um, if you've got the small hands to shoot a mini and there's a little over 300 bucks, not a bad gun. JT, there's never really anything too impressive in here. Uh, no, no, no. There's a JT ER2, which you can pick up at your local Walmart. Uh, this JT Raider doesn't look too, too bad. It basically looks like a chopped down Tipman, which is kind of cool. Um, I haven't actually seen this gun in person yet but it's you know it looks like a chopped down tipman which is you know i kind of like the way that looks um i wish i sold just the gun without the mask or the that little tank and adapter thing i, I don't know i wish they just sold the jt raider on its own but I, i'll show you what i in my opinion I, I don't you say there's a lot of like spider clones we'll just say these are tipman clones okay guns like the jt raider like the bts and stuff like that i'll show you what my favorite uh tipman clone which is actually isn't even a tipman clone Kingman for quite a while was the leader of budget guns. Um, not so much anymore. Kind of pissed off a lot of the retailers, and <laughs> so they're you know they've been fighting and clawing trying to get their way back. But um, you know they, they used to do a lot of things that maybe not recommend them, but they've since changed a lot of their stuff. They used to have like staggered holes on their ASAs. There was a lot of proprietary parts. Uh, you know I, I never like they're starting to get more towards more standard parts now. But um, they've got the Phoenix here, clamp and feed neck. You know, I think it's got the, the was it the Blink board? I can't remember what that board is. There was one that was designed by uh, Tadal that was inside there. Um, Leap circuit board, that's what it was called. Leap circuit board. Um, not a bad circuit board, not a bad trigger, not a bad regulator. Um, they, these shoot paint for 150 bucks. They're not bad. I mean, you see a lot, you used to have the spider cups. People are out there shooting with them. They didn't really have any problems with them. They're a jackhammer, so be ready. I mean, they're clock, 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 clock. I mean, they're, they're definitely a jackhammer. A lot of spring tension in the Kingman guns. But other than that, they do shoot paint pretty well. Uh, Kingman Victor, uh, I'd stay away from these type of guns. I don't like any. I don't like these steel braided hoses going right up into the gun. Um, after over time, your fingers will start rubbing on the steel braid, and before you know, it, you start getting pricked in the finger and stuff like that. So the instant I see a uh, steel braided hose going right into the gun as a foregrip, I stay away from it. So um, MR1, I, I don't. I think, I think it's a waste of money to get any sort of gun that has a side weight feed, okay? I know a lot of people think, oh, it helps me sight down the barrel, but it's one thing on the Tipman on the Model 98 where you've got a clamp and feed nick over there. If it's just one of those just side stove pipes, stay away from it. Just skip it and save your money. Um, once you put any sort of paint on there, it's just going to fall right off and just stay away from it. So let's see here. So we've got, looks like, I mean, King has been coming out with some new stuff. We've got the new MR4. Um, yeah, I mean, it's uh, once again, one of the, one of the guns with the stock that you're going to be wanting to take off. I mean, I know a lot of people get drawn into the, the, um, the Milson part of it because it kind of looks like a rifle, but just, just trust me on this. <laughs> you don't want a paintball gun really with the stock. I mean, if you've been in paintball for a little while and you're kind of, you know, you're kind of, you know, coming into an element like a mag fed or something like that. Okay. Now, now you know where you're going, but if you're just getting into paintball, stay away from guns with stocks. They, yeah, they look cool, but I promise you, it's it's it, they're, they're more of a pain in the ass than anything. Okay, so now we're done with Kingman, and let's go into the Mocal Aurora. Um, I got one of these in the mail, and eh, not a bad gun, but I think there's better guns out there for the price. So, just under 300 bucks. I know there was a huge buzz about them when they first came out. It quickly fizzled out. 
Um, some people really like them. Um, I, in my opinion, I think there's better guns for 280 bucks. So, um, you know, it, it's not a bad design gun, but I, I'd probably wait a little while. Anytime a brand new gun comes out on the market, you know, do you want to be the one? Do you want to be the guinea pig, or do you want everyone else to be the guinea pig? I'd let, I'd let everyone else be the guinea pig. Let them work out. Um, let them come out with a second revision of that gun, maybe with a better board, and uh, and then revisit it maybe in a couple months. Okay, Proto. Probably my favorite. <laughs> Probably my favorite guns, okay, for, for budget ballers, okay. 2011 Proto PMR rail, um, 249 bucks. I, at that, that is the gun to get right there. In my opinion, the budget baller gun to get right there is the 2011 Proto, P, uh, Proto PMR, okay. Let's look at the technology that you're gonna get in that gun. Okay, first off, you're getting the ultralight board, okay. It's pretty much the same board that comes in the DMs is what you're getting on the PMR. Okay, yeah, the dwell is shot through the roof. Okay, I think the dwell on the rails are like, I don't know, like 40 or 50, you know, 40 or 50 or something like that. I mean, that bolt is designed to move very slow. The other thing you're getting, ultralight frame, okay. I know it's a composite, but it's still an ultralight frame. For those who remember, remember the PM5s and the PM6s many years ago? How much was an ultralight frame for those? That was like like a $150 upgrade, okay. so. You know, you're getting that. Also, you're getting the um, you're getting the Hyper 3 regulator. That's the same regulator that's on the Lux, or not the Lux, I'm sorry, the same regulator that's on the NT, the NT11. It's also been the same regulator that's been on all the DM guns. So you get the same frame, the same board, and the same um, the same regulator. And also, um, I believe they've got eye pipes, I believe. Um, so you're getting pretty much everything that um, you're getting pretty much everything that you want, you know, for a budget baller gun. I don't, I don't think there's a better gun that's out there. Clamping feed neck, easy to maintain. It's got a nice ASA, nice trigger, ultralight trigger, good barrel. It's a 12 inch proto barrel, which, you know, if, if you wanted just to keep that same barrel, pick up like the Tech T, um, Tech T uh, iFit kit and put it in the back of it. But the barrel's nice on it, it's just a little bit short, but. Proto PMR, that, that would be, if I was starting out paintball right now on a budget, that would be the gun I'd be shooting for, in my opinion. I think that is the best gun right now out there on the market, under 300 bucks, is the Proto PMR. Um, one, of our, one of our family friends, they wanted to, they had a birthday party. I bought seven of those things with uh, 48 3000 tanks. I put Vulcan hoppers on top of them, and they went out there and played. They shot nine cases of paint, 18,000 rounds, not a single broken ball, not a single chop, not a single problem, and everybody had an amazing time, and we sold them all on marker bids afterwards, and it's just been a great, all great guns, all good things. So, um, yeah, the, the, in my opinion, the budget baller gun to get right now is the 2011 Proto PMR. It's just awesome. And so that leads us into something that just recently got released. Um, but I guess maybe they found a bunch of smart parts ions, but there is um, an ion 2.0. And I don't know, I'm not a big, very big fan of it right from the beginning. No bolt out the back, which means if you want to maintain the gun, you got to completely take it apart. No clamping feed neck, so um, that's not going to work. Good regulator, good ASA. It's got a nice new um, larger on-off button. I don't know. I'd, <laughs> I'd probably skip that one. So no bolt out the back. I mean, you're not going to be able to maintain your bolt. Um, you're going to have to lube that every couple cases. When you're going to completely rip apart your gun. Nah, no thank you. Um, not digging the, uh, the new Smart Parts 2.0. So I think it's too close in price to uh, the GOG the GOG Envy uh, at 199 that has everything you need clamping feed neck bolt out the back uh, so I don't know it's just you know when, when I look at a gun I take a look and I say okay you got this gun at 170 bucks okay you're gonna have to replace the you know you're gonna have to come up with a new body on it. that's gonna be 40 50 bucks clamping feed neck that's another 30 bucks so let's just say that's another 80 dollars on top of what they're selling it for which is let's say 180 bucks so that right there puts it on you know in on par with 260 dollar guns no it just it doesn't work so you know the, the math the the money's not there tiberius arms you know th these are more specialty markers these are more um, you know, these are markers basically for if you've already got a gun and you want to get into something kind of cool like first strike rounds and stuff, but definitely not for budget ballers. So, <laughs> sorry, but uh, you know, if you're a budget baller, Tiberius Arms, uh, that's not where I would look. Let's look at a Tipman. Now we can we're gonna break up you know the Tipman guns. You got almost like spider clones and spiders. You've got Tipman clones and then Tipman. So 
you know the 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 BTs, the BT Deltas. Even I think even the Vulcan is even a a, a Tipman clone. You have the Model 98, which is a rental gun. Um, you have the A5, which is also a rental gun. I know there's a lot of Tipman owners that are out there that really like them. You know they swear that the A5s are indestructible. Not really. Have you ever seen a Cyclone gear break? Yeah. Have you ever seen a Striker O-ring break? Yeah. Not indestructible. Not by any stretch of the imagination. Um, but then again, you know, with, with the 98 and the A5s, you got to remember, these are unregulated guns, okay? Unregulated guns, and there's no eyes in them, and they do break paint. They are rough on paint as well. Army Alpha, um, guns with stocks on them, budget ballers, I'd skip them. Um, you know, yeah, they look really cool, and that's about as far as they go. So you're going to want to take the stock off of it and put a tank on the back of it, and you're left with a gun with lots of extra plastic that... You know, you're paying for that you're not really going to get any added use out of. Carver one actually looks pretty cool. Um, I do like the way the Carver one looks for 99 bucks. Um, it's definitely a pretty cool looking marker. Uh, the, you know, we're almost to the gun that I personally really like from Tipman. Now I know they have the um, the crossover. Crossover is not out yet. Okay, when it comes out, I'll get one, but it's not out yet. One of my favorite guns from Tipman is the Gryphon. Okay. Basically, it's got the same internals as the, you know, pretty close to the same internals as a Model 98 or an A5, same, pretty much the same striker and everything, but that's a really good feeling gun when you, shoot, when you hold it in your hand. It's got a nice soft rubber grip, fore grip, air through the, uh, air through the, the, the grip, and that's a cool little gun for 70 bucks, okay? And the trigger feels good on it, and, you know, for just a mech shooter for 70 bucks, that's... That's a good gun. Um, the Gryphon actually surprised me when I've held it and when I've shot it. I mean, it's still a jackhammer. It still, it still hits really hard when you shoot it. But um, you know, it, it, I think the Gryphon's a really good deal. Now, something else that I would, uh, some as a budget baller, they have these starter kits, right? Waste of money, in my opinion, it's a waste of money. Usually, you're getting, a, you know, a three dollar shake and shoot loader. You're getting a tank that you don't need, and you're getting a mask that usually is going to be a substandard mask. In my opinion, most of these starter kits just skip them. Okay, you're better off buying the pieces individual. Project Salvo, another one of the guns with the stock on the back of it. Um, cool looking military type rifle, but I, like I said, for budget ballers, I don't recommend going that direction. SL68, uh, not a bad... Uh, not my favorite pump guns. There's definitely better pump guns that are out there. You definitely don't want to put any sort of force feed loader on this thing. Um, you'll just it'll just pour paint right out of your loader. TPX pistol. Once again, we're getting into specialty weapons. Um, these are these are definitely not budget baller things. These are just kind of toys. Once you've got all your you know all your guns and stuff like that, you want some kind of fun. That's what you go and get. Um, X7 out of you know I think the X7. Let me see if they maybe come down in price a little bit. Right at about. 300 bucks. Here's the one problem with the X7. You're going to be pretty restricted to just the woods with the X7. You're not going to be very competitive with it out on the airball field, and you're definitely not going to be competitive with it on a hyperball field. They're just too big. Um, I, I would stay away from this as a as a budget baller. You're going to be playing. You got to look at you got to look at paintball in all dimensions. Okay, airball, hyperball, speedball, and woods ball. Okay, if you buy a gun that's only good in woods ball, what are you going to do when you play the other three? You're going to get mowed. Okay, you're going to get mowed. And and you know that'll go weight and the the fact that you've got your loader sticking out the right hand side. So as you start to come out of your bunker, your loader's already exposed before you even see your opponent. Um, it's I, I wouldn't recommend that for a budget baller gun, not at all. But like I said, for the Gryphon is probably the, probably my favorite gun that Tipman has for budget ballers. Unity, it's a new gun that comes out. It's another um, another. Uh, clone of the spider looks like it's got a little bit of a longer barrel clamping feed neck You know, I like what I see here for 80 bucks. I think I'd probably go with the uh, the ER3 the Empire ER3 over the unity It just the ER3 just looks a lot nicer and the fact that it's all sealed. You've got that rear cocking bolt um, It's all sealed. I don't have to worry about dirt getting inside there. I'd probably go with the uh, the ER3 over the unity Let's see what else we got here um, Vulcan has that SW once again. It's another Tipman clone um, hundred bucks, you know, looks like it's got a, a foregrip here, pretty much, pretty much a clone of a Model 98. So, nothing really too, too exciting there. And so let's go into, let's talk about budget baller tanks, okay? You can do one of two different things. You can either get yourself 68, 4500, or you can waste your money. <laughs> that's really what, that's really what the tanks come down to, okay? 
if you get a CO2 tank, you get a 3,000 psi tank. If you get a 48 3,000 tank, you're the incident comes in the mail. You're going to already wish that you would went and got yourself a 68 4500, and you've just set yourself back 30, 40, 50, 60 bucks towards your goal of getting a 68 4500. Now, over on TechPB, we have in the forum, in the uh, in the in the in the then you've got to create an account to see it. We've got an online sale hunter here where all the time you're going to find 68 4500s for sometimes between $89 to $109, okay? Sometimes they're going to be rehydros. That's fine, okay? Rehydro tanks are perfectly fine. Tanks are designed to last, you know, many, many, many years, okay? Just because you have to service them every five years doesn't mean that the tank, the, the bottle is bad. You know, that's like saying that because you got to change the oil on your car every 3,000 miles, after 3,000 miles, your car is bad. No, it's just a service. It's an inspection. It's not a big deal. So there, there's tanks that, you know, can last, you know, 15, 20 years. If they keep passing inspection when they put 15, 17,000, thousand psi into them and they pass the visual inspection they're just fine so um you know you you want to just save up and get the 68 4500 even if it's a rehydro it's got a new reg on it you're good to go but there's a lot of companies that are out there that are selling um 68 4500s i've seen them on paintball paintball gateway all the time sometimes you see them on ans gear um you keep searching around you're going to find yourself a 68 4500 uh for about um you know usually right around 100 there's a new company came out dan boyles um action junkie over on pbn he's got a new company that came out called swap my tank um they're taking hydro tanks putting new regulators on them they're selling them for like 99 bucks um i see some promos on him that he's putting up on facebook so the ability to get yourself a 68 4500 for 100 bucks if you look around is there okay it definitely is there and if you think about it if it's a freshly hydro rehydro tank it's gonna last you five years you're basically paying 20 bucks a year for a good tank that's what that's what i that in my opinion 68 4500 or you waste your money <laughs> sorry it's it, that that's basically where we're at i um, mean if you're not in the online if you're not in the tech b forms create an account and go into the online sale hunter there's just tons of savings in here um you know here, here's a proto rail 209 dollars Let's see, where is it at? Um, looks like the, look, I think the deal already closed out. Paintball Online, deal of the hour. Okay, yeah, Paintball Online had a deal of the hour. Proto Rail, 209 bucks. You would have jumped in on that, you would have saved yourself $40. Um, Tipman A5 Apex Barrels, um, Slide Pro Merc Pants, 70 bucks. $100 off the Brown DX. Um, 3 2 Pot Harnesses for 39 bucks. Nano Feed Necks on sale. Um, brand new in the box Eagle 11 for $950, one hour sale. Uh, Stiffy Autococker Threaded Barrel, 55 bucks. $38 Spider. Kingman Fasta Loader, if you guys need a loader, here you go, 60 bucks. iForce for $32. Uh, LTD Pants for 59 bucks. Events for $59.99, that was the, uh, the, the camo events that ANS Gear had a special on it. So, I mean, if you're not in the, in the Tech B forums and you're looking for stuff for cheap, you, you need to get into the Tech B forum and go into the online sale hunter and peruse that. And if you find a good deal, contribute to it. I love finding good deals and I post them on here all the time. So, um, let's talk about masks. Budget baller masks. One of my personal ones, I know they've been a little bit backordered, is the V-Force mask. Um, in my opinion, the, the Pro Vantage is probably one of my favorite ones. Starts out at 33 bucks, great mask. Um, the profile, let's see what they're selling those for. Those went up in price to 70. Let's see if we can do a little better. Bah, 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 bah. BT paintball mass. Let's see. Nope, that's 83 bucks for that one. Empire. No, Empire's got some. That's a little inexpensive mask quite a while ago, but I think they did away with all of those. Stream rage. Mmm. I mean, you see some of these like these cheap masks are like 12, 20 bucks. I, I would stay away from those. Um, let's see how much the Proflex. I think the Proflexes are now selling for. There you go. You get the Flex Eight for like 50 bucks. I mean, Dynasty was wearing those back a few years ago. So, um, you know, Flex Eight, 50 bucks. That's not a bad deal. Um, Proflexes look like they're selling for just a little over 60 bucks. QLS, meh, Elite, meh, not digging those. Let's see what we can find here. Okay, now the thing you gotta understand with masks like the Proto Switch and sometimes some of these budget masks is they don't come with a thermal lens, okay? So you're basically getting what, well in most cases would be basically the rental mask, okay? You're gonna get right back into the fogging issues and most people that end up picking up a budget mask 
with a non-thermal lens, they start fogging, they go right back and buy a $30 thermal lens. So they, may, they don't really make any sense because may, you might as well go and get the better mask that already comes with the thermal lens for the same price of a cheap mask and then upgrading the lens later on, okay? So, um, you know, we talked about the, uh, you know, the Proto and, and let's go ahead and move on. I mean, Sly right now, all their masks are, are you know, up there, they've got the Profit and then they've got the Annex non-thermal lens. Um, those are selling for about 35 bucks. And Tippmann's got a couple masks. Uh, they got the Tippmann 420 performance goggle, Ranger, all non-thermal lenses. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not digging those too much. Um, armor and shield, V-Force armor, rental mask. Um, I mean, you basically, when it comes to masks, you're gonna have two different options. You're gonna get either the rental mask or you're gonna get a quality mask. Get the quality mask, okay? You'll be so much happier if you just get a quality mask. Um, mask is gonna come with a, um, you know, the, you know, if you're, if you're gonna spend the money, especially like I said, you wanna get those first, you know, I would definitely go and get the, get yourself a quality mask. GI Milsim Sleek, that's not a bad mask for 40 bucks. That's probably where I would go. Now let's talk about also, um, used masks. I think that's a terrible idea. Okay, <laughs> I think that is a terrible idea to buy a used mask. Okay, you're gonna buy the mask for you know, let's say 20 30 bucks. You're most of the time the lens is gonna be shot on it, so you have to go out and buy a new lens. It's gonna cost another 30 bucks. You might as well have just bought a brand new mask to begin with, and you're not dealing with someone else's sweat, someone else's oils on the foam, someone else's breath in the you know, in, into the uh, end of the end of the rubber, and and you know, you're gonna get a mask that's brand new. So you know, mask, you definitely want to buy yourself a good quality mask. So let's talk about BST tips. I mean, there's not a lot I can tell you. A lot of people will ask, you know, what, what's the price of this? It's an open market. So people can charge and people can pay for, for whatever they want. Um, you know, it just comes down to being a savvy buyer and browsing the different forums and seeing what things are selling for and stuff like that. I, I think paintball equipment, in my opinion, is very inexpensive already as it is. With like, like you saw, we saw the uh, the Pro Rail for two hundred and fifty bucks. I mean, that's going to be a brand new in the box gun with a warranty that no one shot, that no one's messed around with, that no one's stripped any threads with. There's not going to be any surprises on it, no hassle, no possibility of a scam or any of that other stuff. So. You know, when it comes to tips with BST, there's there's not really much I can tell you. It's, you know, you're you're, you know, you're on your, you know, for the most part, you're kind of on your own. You're taking a risk with the hopes of getting some sort of savings, and and it is what it is. But also, you know, there are horror stories out there of people that have gotten ripped off. I'm one of them. I've been ripped off in BSTs before, and and uh, you know, there is a chance of you getting a gun with a stripped bolt or a stripped thread or or not even getting it at all. So it's up to you <laughs> if you want to roll the dice in the BST and try to get something for cheap. You know, that's that's completely up to you. But you know, very few people that I've seen will turn around and just sell a perfectly perfect working gun and not have some sort of hidden thing in there that they're just not telling you about. It could be a stripped frame screw, it could be anything. But keep in mind that you are gonna get a gun that could potentially have some problems with it. It may be out of warranty and then the savings you may get by buying it used when you send it in for repair may get washed out with the repair bill. So you know that's hopefully that gives you guys a little bit of of um of uh tips on BST but I don't know it's it's you know Paintball equipment is so cheap nowadays that it's just not really where you want to go. Now, in loaders, loaders too. You've got, you've got basically there's two categories of loaders. You got junk and you've got the good stuff. So, um, you know, right now the the Halo was a really good loader, but they, you know they just shot the prices up on that. If you didn't get in on when the Halos were down at like fifty dollars, um, sorry, but Halos were down at like fifty bucks for quite a while. Um, you know, let's go through the the BT the BT loaders. Those are all the rip drive ones. Um, obviously, Dye's got the rotor loaders, which are hella expensive, so that's way out of budget ballers. Um, Empire right now, you can still get the original Prophecy in some places for about a hundred bucks, and the uh, you know the Z2s are selling for 170. That's that's you know way up there in price. Um, it's a good loader for 170, but it's still pretty expensive. Um, Extreme Rage, um, cheap plastic, Gen X Global, cheap plastic, um, Hardcore Torque. Never been a good, never been a fan of that. Um, Invert 2 is a good budget loader. Um, that, man, they, they've shot the prices up on those as well. Those did come out, they were like 59 bucks, now they're at 75. Um, the Invert, Invert 2 is a really good loader uh, for the price. You know, it also, if you didn't take advantage of it when the, uh, when the view loader, when they had those um, velocities for dirt cheap, that was a great sale. That was a great sale. And there's still some people that still sell the velocities for like 
40, 50 bucks, that's a great loader, especially if you're on a budget. And they're very light. JT Overdrive, eh, skip it. Um, Kingman's got a couple loaders um, that you know you don't really want to look past, but you know they got like the Fasta, which is kind of like the um, kind of the smaller top loading uh, loader when it comes, almost like the Pinocchio, basically almost like Pinocchio internals. Um, but the Pinocchio loader recently has come down in price. Um, you can pick them up right now for 130 bucks. They used to be about 150, and that's a that right there is a great loader. That's my personal favorite loader, 130 bucks, and it's just that's just an awesome loader. You know, Proto they've got the Primo, which is cute, but you know it's it's still a shake and shoot loader. Um, Tacoma, not much there. Um, Tippmann's got a couple loaders uh, like the SSL 200, especially if you're playing like Ultimate Woods Ball League. A lot of people like those. Caps out about 12 or 13 balls per second. Not a bad, not a bad loader. Let's talk about the VMAX. VMAX is a great loader for 100 bucks. Um, you get the black one for 100 bucks. That's a really good loader. Um, then you got about another 20 dollars for the Speed Feed. It's pretty much the 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 Pinocchio F1 that never came out. That's the VMAX. I mean, it's pretty much you know Evan wanted to come out with basically Pinocchio internals with a smaller shell. Well, they did it with the VMAX. A pretty good loader for for 100 dollars. I, I definitely really like that loader. Um, you know, and then I don't know. View loader once the velocity sold out, they they just they don't have much. So. Um, I Force never did well. Um, they've got this Vlotor Revolution Cat, which basically it, it should be caught COT because it's basically constantly on technology. <laughs> basically, you turn it on, and it just keeps running. So, um, Force on Demand. I don't know the, the I Force and the Force on Demand. They never did well, and the Quantum was probably one of the biggest pieces of shit that ever hit the market. So, um, probably for loaders, I would probably be shooting for either the Vulcan V Max for hundred bucks, the Pinocchio for one thirty if you can swing it. Um, you've also got the uh, the invert 2 for about 75 bucks. So there's definitely some really good prices for loaders that are out there um, Probably between the three I'd probably shoot for the Pinocchio. I, I really like the Pinocchio So you can you can get standard halo speed feeds for the Pinocchio for dirt cheap um, You know you can pick those up for like five six bucks for a basic uh, speed feed for your Pinocchio hopper And they're just indestructible and they work great for 130 bucks. So that'd be probably the direction I would go um, much more battery efficient than the halo um, or the Prophecy, I mean you get about 25-30 cases of paint on 2.9 volts, you can't really beat that. So that's, uh, that's you know, I think we went through quite a few accessories. I mean personally I think if I was going to be shooting, if I was going to be targeting or shooting for a budget baller setup, my ideal budget baller setup would be a uh, Proto Rail, okay, try to find it on sale and run it anywhere from 210 to 250 bucks. Find yourself a good possibly rehydro tank with uh, you know a good regulator on like a ninja regulator that's my personal favorite regular market you can rebuild in my home get just to put yourself a ninja regulator on there and you can hopefully maybe find those for maybe right around about a hundred bucks and then as far as a loader you know the invert 2 is nice I think the Pinocchio is a lot better uh, for the price the VMAX is nice also so I'd probably shoot for either a Pinocchio or a VMAX at a hundred bucks so you're at 250 for the gun one fit or 100 for the tank and then another hundred, a little over hundred bucks, you're into a really nice gun for about $450 and it's going to last you a really long time. So, whew. so we covered a lot of products here. I hope this guy, I hope this helps you guys, but that's, uh, you know, I mean, hopefully, you know, I know I was kind of talking out loud, but I was, I hopefully I could show you what goes through my mind when I'm taking a look at products on a website. Thanks for tuning in.